So let's do further simplification of a force and couple system in three dimension. Now we have this to be our first question. Let's try to solve this question. Question one, replace the loading shown by an equivalent single resultant force and specify the X and Y coordinates of its line of action. Now we have three forces here. So let's try to label these forces. So let's assume that F1 is equal to 100 newtons. F2 is equal to 500 newtons. And then F3 is equal to 400 newtons. Now, you realize that the line of action of all the three forces acts along the Z axis. And so, we can assume that since F1 is moving vertically upwards, then we have F1Z to be 100 newtons. And then we have F2 acting vertically downwards. So that becomes negative. So negative 500. And then F3Z also becomes negative 400 newtons. So all these forces only have Z components. Now let's try to add all the Z components. So that becomes FRZ and that is equal to F1Z plus F2Z plus F3Z. So we have 100 plus negative 500 plus negative 400. Now when we add all these three values, then we have negative 800 newtons. So what this primarily means is that the resultant force along the z-axis acts vertically downwards. So if you want to find the resultant force, then that will be equal to the square root of frx square plus fry square plus frz square. Now since this force has no x and y components, it means that they are equal to zero. So we have zero square plus zero square plus negative 800 square and that is equal to 800 newtons so the resultant force or the equivalent single resultant force is 800 newtons and then it is acting vertically downwards so this suggests that it is acting vertically downwards the negative here so after finding the equivalent single resultant force the next is to find the location where this resultant force line of action passes and so we are going to specify any arbitrary point say p where we have this to be parallel to the x-axis so this is the distance along the x-axis and this is the distance along the y-axis so we specify an arbitrary point p we specify an arbitrary point P, X, Y in meters. So let's find this location. Now to do so, we first of all need to take the moment of the resultant force about both the X and the Y axis. And then we equate it to the sum of all the moments of the forces or the individual forces we have also about the X and the Y axis. So first of all, let's consider moment about the x-axis moment about the x-axis so we are going to consider first of all the resultant force now to take the moment about the x-axis we have the perpendicular distance to be y away from the line of action of the force and so since the force is acting vertically downwards and we have this to be the perpendicular distance away from the y-axis it means that we are going to take the clockwise direction therefore we have a positive value for the force so that is 800 times y 
and that is equal to now for f1 which is 100 newtons we have the line of action of the force passing through the x-axis therefore the moment of this force about the x-axis is zero now let's move on to f2 for f2 this is acting vertically downwards and then we have the perpendicular distance away from the x-axis to be 4 meters therefore we have 500 times 4 because we are also taking the clockwise direction so it remains positive now to 400 newtons that is f3 we also have the perpendicular distance away from the x-axis to be 4 meters also acting vertically downwards therefore we take the clockwise direction so that also remains positive now let's simplify this so we have 800y equals now 500 times 4 is 2000 and then 400 times 4 is 1600 so we add a 2 and then we have 3000 600 equals 800y so we divide through by 800 and then we have y to be equal to now 36 divided by 8 is 4.5 so we have y to be equal to 4.5 meters now let's find the moment about the y-axis So also taking the moment about the y-axis, we consider the resultant force first. So we have the resultant force acting vertically downwards, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of this force to the y-axis is x meters. Therefore, we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction. So we have negative 800 times x and that is equal to for F1, 100 newtons, we have the force acting vertically upward, which means that if you want to take the moment about the y-axis, you need to move in the clockwise direction. The perpendicular distance from the y-axis is 3 meters. So we have 100 times 3. F2, which is 500 newtons, is acting vertically downwards. Perpendicular distance from y or the y-axis is 4 meters. So we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction, which makes it negative. So negative 500 times 4. Now the line of action of this force, F3, passes through the y-axis. So the moment of this force about the y-axis is 0. So let's proceed. So we have negative 800x to be equal to 300 minus 2000. And that is equal to negative 1700 so we have x equals negative 1700 divided by negative 800 divided by negative 800 and that is equal to 2.125 meters therefore the equivalent single resultant force fr which is 800 newtons and then directed vertically downwards is located at a point p which is 2.125 comma 4.5 5 meters now let's move on to the next question also for question 2 using the same method we are going to replace the loading shown by an equivalent single resultant force and then specify the x and y coordinates of its line of action here we have four forces so we label them so f1 is 100 newtons 
F2, 200 newtons. F3, 200 newtons. And then F4, 100 newtons. So as usual, we have all the forces acting along the z-axis. So F1, z is equal to downwards, which means negative 100. F2, z also acting vertically downwards, negative 200 newtons. F3z, negative 200. F4z, also negative 100. So we have the sum of forces along the z axis to be equal to, we add all these four quantities. So we have negative 100 plus negative 200 plus negative 200 plus negative 100 negative 100 minus 200 minus 200 minus 100 is negative 600 newtons so the resultant force fr is equal to the square root of 0 square plus 0 square plus negative 600 square so zero zero means that we have no x nor y components so when you evaluate this you have 600 newtons and we know that the resultant force is acting vertically downwards because of this negative so this is the equivalent single resultant force now let's find the moment about the x and the y axis in order to find the location where the line of action of the resultant force passes. So first, let's specify an arbitrary point CP for the resultant force. So that is 600 newtons. And then we have distance along the x-axis. And then distance along the y-axis. So first we take the moment about the x-axis. So moment about x axis. Now taking the moment of the resultant force about the x axis, we are going to move in the clockwise direction because we have the perpendicular distance away from the x axis to be y. So moving in the clockwise direction, we have 600 times y. And that is equal to now for f1 perpendicular distance away from the x-axis is 3 meters 2 plus 1 is 3 meters so we are going to move in the anti-clockwise direction we are going to move this way anti-clockwise direction so that is negative 100 times 3 also for f2 we have this to be 200 acting vertically downwards perpendicular distance from this point to the x-axis is one meter since we are moving in the anti-clockwise direction it means that we are going to have negative 200 times one now also for this 200 newton force we are also going to move in the anti-clockwise direction so the perpendicular distance from the line of action of this force to the x-axis is also one meter and we are moving in the anti-clockwise direction so minus 200 also times 1 then for the last one 100 newtons perpendicular distance away from the x-axis is 3 meters so we are going to move in the clockwise direction so it remains positive So let's evaluate this. We have 600y equals negative 300 minus 200 minus 200 plus 300. 
So negative 300 cancels out positive 300. We are left with negative 200 minus 200. And that is equal to negative 400 equals 600 y. And so we divide through by 600. And then we have y to be equal to negative 0 0.667 meters. Next, let's find the moment about the y-axis. So for the moment about the y-axis, we have 600 acting vertically downwards and the perpendicular distance away from the y-axis is x meters. Now since it's acting vertically downwards, it means you are going to move in the anticlockwise direction. So it becomes negative 600 x equals f1 100 newtons acting vertically downwards perpendicular distance from this point to the y-axis is 3 meters so we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction so negative 100 times 3 for this 200 newton force perpendicular distance to the y-axis is 2 meters we are also going to take the anticlockwise direction so minus 200 times 2 for this one we are going to move in the clockwise direction because it's acting vertically downwards now the perpendicular distance away from the y-axis is 3 meters so we need to move in the clockwise direction so that becomes plus 200 times 3 and then for the last one, perpendicular distance away from the y-axis is 3 meters. It is acting vertically downwards, so we take the anticlockwise direction. So we have minus 100 times 3. So negative 600x equals, this becomes negative 300, negative 400 plus 600 minus 300 so negative 300 minus 300 is negative 600 so they cancel out positive 600 we are left with negative 400 so negative 600 x equals negative 400 we divide through by negative 600 and then we have x to be equal to 0 0.667 meters so therefore it means that the equivalent single resultant force fr which is equal to 600 newtons and then directed vertically downward or downwards is located at a point p which is 0.667 comma negative 0.667 meters. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.